All right, we're going to skip lesson 25 because I don't really feel like dealing with it right now. And um, we all know how to estimate already, and estimating division is the same whether it has a decimal in it or not. And once you've, once I feel like you've mastered dividing with decimals, then we'll go back and work on the estimating part just because I'm not ready to overwhelm you at this point. So let's uh, talk about a little bit of review. Raise your hand if you can tell me what the divisor is in that number. What's the divisor? 13. Okay, 13 is the divisor. You guys probably want to make sure you write these words down so that you know kind of how to spell them because on your state assessment this year you're going to have to type things. It has writing in it as well. Hopefully, you don't get kind of wrong for spelling, but you at least need to know kind of the basic structure of the word. Uh, Ray Shea, if you could tell me what the dividend is. What's a dividend? Okay, it's this number. It's the number that we're dividing. It's the number that goes first in the problem, okay? When it says 36 and 14 hundredths divided by 13, that's the number that goes in the box. You don't say, well, this number is bigger than this, so the biggest number goes in the box. That's not the way it works. It's whichever number is written first. Because you're getting to the point now where you're gonna be dividing numbers that are smaller then the divisor. And what goes there? What is that? That would be your quotient. That would be the quotient. So looking at problem set one. Remember when we do division, we could use our chart that looks like this. It's 36 and 14 hundredths. So you have 36. Let me make my pen a little smaller here maybe. How would I do this if I were using my chart? How would I start that problem? Okay, go ahead. What do I have to know before I start circling things? Do you remember? Go ahead. So how do I know how many dots to circle each time? What is that number called? I'm picking on you now. That's the dividend, so what am I going, how am I going to know how many dots to circle? What, what am I going to look at? Really, can I help her out? What's that word? Good, you need to know what the divisor is, and the divisor on the problem set 2A is 13 and 
13. So that's what we're dividing by. Can I circle 13 dots here? No. But what do I need to do before I start moving everything around? What do I need to do first? Alexis? Well, three is actually 30. So, well, we need to put 13 dots around first. Yep, put all the dots first. Remember I said the easiest way to remember it is to do maybe five dots on each row. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I have one dot here and then one, two, three, four. Now, just because I'm showing you this method, does that mean you have to use it? No. But it's good to be aware of the different ways to solve, especially if you keep missing your problems. Like, how did I miss that? Well, probably because the way you're solving it isn't working. Sometimes you have to kind of use that thing up in your head to hold your brain. That helps a lot. Yeah, turn it on. Okay, start the engine. Now what I do, Alexis, go ahead. Okay, can I make, uh, can I circle 13 dots in my first one? No. So what do I need to do? Okay, everybody on your place value charts right now, I want you to show me what this is going to look like since 13 doesn't go into 3, so what's that going to look like on this chart? You need to have your gold chart out. And I want you to show me what that looks like with dots. What is this going to look like right here, this space? So don't forget, guys, that every time we move one place over, it's 10, right? So if I go from 1 to 10, place I've gone up 10, I have three dots. If each one of these is worth 10, how many total do I have? I have 30 total, and I'm going to take all of these. And move them over here. So how many dots am I moving over? 30. I'm moving over 30. What number am I dividing by? What's my divisor? Matthew, what is it? 13. So how many dots am I going to circle at a time? You know? Yep. Bingo. Good job. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to count 13. Well, I know I have five on each row. So that's good. That helps out. And come up here and circle 13, and then I'm going to circle 13 again. Maybe. If my pen will work for me today. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to give me a lot to this offer. Wow. So how many sets of 13 do I have? Two. Two sets. I have nothing here, right? So you could say zero. I have two sets of 13 here. And how many dots am I going to move to the right? Six. How many do I have left over? Six. Do I have six? I'll move 100 over. <laughs> and this, this is the point where you would say, well, this isn't good. So how can I figure out how many times 13 goes into 100 right now just without doing anything? 
I can move this set over. And now what do I have in this column? A hundred and one. So figure out your boards right now. 101 divided by 13. What is it? Who can tell me? Eight. Remainder. Do you have a remainder? Remainder 10 again? Is it too big? Try it again. Manny, what'd you get? Seven remainder. What's your remainder? So I have seven. Does everybody agree that you have seven remainder nine? Chance, what'd you get? Seven remainder ten. Seven remainder ten? Is that too big? Is it just right? Seven remainder ten. So you take your remainder, you move it over, and this time I would have 104. Divide that out for me real fast. Abby. Eight. Eight. Everybody agree? Remainder? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. So your answer would be two and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two and seventy-eight hundredths for thirty-six and fourteen hundredths divided by thirteen. Now, to me, that way is a pain. But if you haven't been working on your multiplication facts, this is the only method I know that you can use that you won't have to multiply to get there. So. I would probably use my extra time, instead of wasting time making a whole bunch of dots, I would use my extra time learning my multiplication facts instead of making dots. There's another method you can use that you'll, kind of, you'll still arrive at the same answer. So I still have the same problem. What was the answer again? Two. Okay, so that's the... That's the answer or the, everybody, what is that? Okay, quotient. We found the quotient of 36 and 1400 divided by 13. Another way to do it. What's the biggest number that's going to go on top? The biggest number that's going to go on top of that box. What's the biggest number that you can have up there? No, not two. I mean, any box. Any box. You're right about that. Yeah, two. But any box I have, what would be the biggest number that can ever go up there? Could you put 10 up above? Could you? Hmm. I don't know. Could you put 10? I mean, you could if you want to start doing double digit, but if I were just trying to do one single digit at a time, what would be the biggest number I could go up to? Two. Not on that one. Nine. On any number. Nine would be the biggest number. So what I would do, if you're starting to miss problems and you're not quite understanding it, I'll move this out of the way here.
Boy, my board is not working right today. You know, I kind of like this method. This is, I like this method a lot because I don't, this way I don't have to multiply several times to see if I'm too big or too low. I'm going to do this once and then I'm set for the rest of the problem. So if you like this method, you can use this method. And what's 1 times 13 is? Then you just go over to the sides. 13 plus 13 is? 26. That's your next number. What do I do over here? Plus 13 again is 39. Plus 13 again is? Now, someone just said too big. Let's say you start doing this method. And you get to your first number and you see it's too big. Could you stop adding at that point? And then you could, couldn't you? Because you don't really know if you're going to use all these, do you? But at least you have these written down now so that if you need them again, because I, sometimes I see people multiplying the same numbers over and over and over. I mean, you can just have a little cheat sheet right here. Plus 13 is... 65. You just need to make sure you know how to add when you do this. Uh, slow down there, bud. 78. You're going faster than my brain can work. Okay, this way is a lot of work too, but if you're having a hard time looking at it and saying, okay, does this go into this, then you need to use this method. If you keep getting your answers wrong and you check it, my favorite part though is when I look at how you've checked your answer and it doesn't match the, when the answer you get from checking does not match your, no, you use your, uh, what is it, dividend, then I know at that point that you don't care if you're right or wrong because you're just going to finish it and move on. That's not why you check. Every single person in this class should have made 100% on every single division sheet that we've done so far because you know that if you check it, and the answer doesn't match, then your answer is wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So by missing some, one, two, three, then you're saying that you don't care if it's right or not because you're just going to leave it. I mean, that's basically the message, right? So everybody should make 100%. And it's interesting on those pages where I had made you guys write on notebook paper, you had to actually divide out the paper. Almost every single person made 100% that turned it in. So ev there's no, there's never an excuse to ever miss a division problem, ever. Because now you know how to check it to see if you're right. And if you don't care about your work, then you won't check it and you'll miss problems. Yes, ma'am. What do you mean cross out? Like if you were minus a number and you had to cross it out, you would have to get the same. When you check it, it should always match up. I'm not sure. I'm not. It doesn't matter what you do. If you have to borrow or not, it should still come back to the same. The same answer. And if you don't, 
then you need to divide again and then check it again. Okay? Mm-hmm. Then you get in this circle, so that's why it's so important to know you have to check back. Yep. Or at least have somewhere else, that you can check yeah. them or so that you know if you come back to the right And hopefully you guys have held on to your tape your charts that you've made, right? Okay, we have a decimal in this problem, but do we care about a decimal while we're dividing? At this point we do not. At some point we will because well, I'm not going to even talk about that yet because we'll just cross each bridge when we get to it. So 13 into 36. I have a decimal. What should I do immediately with my decimal, Alexis? Bring it up. Move it up. So I'm going to move my decimal up. To right, straight up. Should you ever look at that and say, well, I don't know what goes into six and one tenth? No, because once you move the decimal up, you can completely ignore the one that's in the box. Who cares about that one now? I don't care about it. Okay, look to the left. How many times does 13 go into 36 without going over? Two times, because if we did it three times, we'd get 39. That'd be too big, wouldn't it? So this is going to be two. Does it go into three? No. So from now on, remember, instead of putting an X, we're going to put a zero. How many numbers will my answer have in it? But how many total numbers am I going to have in my answer? Four, because we're going to count zero right now as a number two. Because some of us are still having that problem of there's four numbers there and you give me two number quotient. And that doesn't work. If there's four numbers, you have four numbers above. If there's three numbers, you have three numbers above. If there's one number, you would have one number above. So 13 times 2 is 26. Subtract it. I have 10, starting to remind me a little bit of that chart we made a few minutes ago. Now what do I need to do? Bring down the one. Bring down the one. Do I bring a decimal with it? Nope. Forget the decimal. It's now part of your imagination and your dreams. Hmm. Nightmares more like it, right? Okay, so 101. Number three. What goes into 100, let's see, 13 times what? We'll get me close to 101 without going over. Wait a minute. Okay, seven, because if I did eight, it would be too big. So we're going to do seven. 7 times 13 is 91. Subtract it. Now what do I do? Bring down the 4. Gives me 104. How close can I get to 104 without going over? 8 times. So if you find something like this helpful, then do that. Especially when you get into like three digit divisors, then you're not sitting there thinking, okay, how close can I get to this number without going over? Because you've learned with estimation, sometimes you solve it, it's too big, so you have to solve it again. So you're doing the same work double time. So if you just make a list to begin with, that's very helpful. Now what do I need to do? What do I need to do? Because I'm telling you, I make mistakes all the time. What do I need to do? 
check your work, check my work, which I have to do a lot of now since I'm having to make my own answer key. So, yeah, not only am I making my answer key, but then I'm grading yours. And sometimes when I'm grading yours and, like, a lot of people get a certain answer, then guess what I start thinking? I think I got it wrong, so then I start doing what to my work? Checking it. Because wouldn't it be uncool if I got wrong answers and I checked my work, but I didn't care and I didn't change it, and if your answer didn't match mine, I just counted you wrong? Would that be uncool? That's kind of like you guys being uncool and not checking your work and changing it if it's wrong. And then making me have to pull my hair out and see, you see these gray hairs on my sideburns now? That uh, gray hair is popping in everywhere. It's not because of you guys, though, because you guys are, like, the best class I've had in a long time. So how do I check my work? Take the quotient. I love your vocabulary. Ooh, quotient times divisor. So quotient. Do I need to remember my decimal? Definitely. Well, and guess what? This is cool, too, because I can look over here. I can't look over there, though, because that would give me the wrong thing. So that doesn't work. Forget it. Okay, so what do I do? What do I do? Multiply it. Everybody, three times eight is? Carry the two. Seven times three is? Carry the two. Two times three is? Now, some of you need a look right now. Am I done with this problem? No, we should not be this far in math, especially since you've worked on double-digit division now, or multiplication at least two years. We should not be this far in math where I'm seeing people multiplying by double-digit and I get one line of answers. That shouldn't be happening. So what do I need to do next, 23? What do I need to do next? Okay. So I can I've done the three, so now I just start in the tens place and now what do I do? Okay, I multiply all the number the numbers on top times one, which would give me two hundred seventy eight. Add them. Now what do I need to do? Now what do I need to do, Connor? Um, okay. If there's two numbers behind the decimal, that means your answer or your, what's the answer to the multiplication problem? Product. Your product, if you're, this is called a multiple, has two numbers behind the decimal. Your product will also have, number four, what do you think? What do you think? Does this match this? That means we're right. So tell me what is different about this lesson 
versus the lessons that you've been working on? What's the one thing that's different? It's easier because you've practiced a lot with it, right? That's the only difference, right? It has decimal. There's no remainder. Yeah, there's no remainder. Not in these problems anymore. So let me tell you right now. I haven't solved these, but I can almost guarantee that none of these are going to have remainder today that you work on because... We haven't talked about that step yet. So, that's a good question, Ms. Kleppel. Because no, they should not have remainders in these. In fact, you'll probably never use the R again. Uh huh. What if you have, like, if you had that kind of a and then you had a, and then you ended. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh oh, 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 we'll get to that one. We'll get to that one. Uh-oh. Because, see, here's what happens. Have you guys ever seen the Bugs Life movie? Yeah. Where all the ants are in a line, and they know where they're going, they know what they're doing, and then this branch falls, boom, and separates them, and they don't know where they're going, and all of a sudden it's like, what, what, what? Questions do that also. Because then kids start thinking about, oh, but what if there's a remainder? We're not to that bridge yet. So we're not going to drop the branch on this lesson right now. Hold the question. It won't. It won't. So right now, your brains are telling you you do exactly the same as you've been doing, except now the minute you see a decimal, you're moving it up. That's it. Okay, your assignment for tonight is all of the homework lesson, and I'm going to give you the rest of the class to work on it. Uh, the first question, okay, hold on a minute, guys, just a minute, I'm still recording. You only have a, oh yeah, you have two pages, I forget, you don't have front and back. Okay, question number one on lesson 26 says create two whole number division problems that have a quotient of nine and a remainder of five. Justify which is greater using decimal division. Uh, let's do that real fast because now that they put that as a first question, now I'm concerned that there might be some remainders. Let's do that real fast. Okay. So pay attention, people. We're going to solve number one together, so everybody should have this correct on their assignment. How do I create a division problem where I know what the quotient is. How have we been doing that? How have we been doing that? We don't need a decimal yet. You don't need a decimal. So you take any number. So give me a number. Everybody should have this number written down once we do this because that lets me know you're paying attention. Give me a one-digit number. Let's make life easy. One-digit number. Just pick a number. Random number. Nine. nine. Okay, so you you have your nine. That's my divisor. So what? How do I figure out what the dividend's going to be? Okay, so nine times nine equals 81 
Now what do I need to do? Anthony? Add your remainder, which makes it So how would this problem look then if I were to put it inside the box? Chance. Um, Perfect. But here's the deal. They want us to show decimal. We because we're not going to do remainders. So does nine go into eight? And it says create two whole number division problems. We're going to see one. Does nine go into eight? How many times does nine go into eight? Zero times. Put your zero. Don't forget your zero. Right now I have two numbers in the dividend. So how many numbers do I know for a fact are going to be on top? One. I have two numbers in the dividend. There you go. So we're going to now count zero as a number. That way we're not getting all confused and putting an X and stuff. Okay. How many times does 9 go into 86 without going over? Nine times. Nine times. Oh, that already told us up here, didn't it? So 9 times 9 is 81. Subtract it. But we can't use a remainder. So what is that invisible thing that is behind every single number? A decimal. And if I don't have a number behind a decimal, what can I always add behind the decimal? What can I always add? A what? No. Nope. You can always add a zero behind the decimal. So you can always add a decimal at the end of a number, and you can always add a zero at the end. So now I have a decimal. What do I need to do? So what do I need to do first? Before I do anything else so I don't forget, Yep, bring the decimal up, and then we'll do what Brianna just said and bring down the zero. Of course, we probably picked a number that's going to go on forever. But as long as you're following along, guess what? You're going to get it right. So how many times is 9 going to 50 without going over? Five, Five times 9 is? Five. Subtract it. What do we have left? Five. Well, I can't have a remainder, so what am I going to do? Uh, huh? Another Add another zero. And then what am I going to do with that zero? Bring it down. And we already know we're in a pattern, aren't we? So I'm going to show you guys what to do with that. Some of you, you got your mouths going and you're not hearing what I'm saying. Can I add another zero? I can add as many zeros as I want, right? But we kind of know it's going to take a pattern now. Once you hit... The third number in the pattern, it just keeps going on and on and on. Have you ever seen anything that looks like this? That means you're done solving that problem. Three numbers in, you know for a fact it's going to keep being the same number. So you put a line over the last number to let them know it's going to go infinity. But in fifth grade, they won't give you a number like that. Hopefully, but it's still good to know. In most cases, they would say once you have solved it, round to the tenth place. So, what would my number become if I ran it to the tenth place? The tenth place. I'm going to round. What number is my tenth place? Five. Five. So you look at the neighbor. If it's five or greater, what happens to this number? It goes up. So does it become a one or what's it become? A six. So that needs to be in your first blank. And now you know.
Miss Einstein, that if there's a remainder, you can't do a remainder. You have to keep adding. You add your decimal, bring it up, add a zero, keep subtracting. You will not run into a problem like this. I can guarantee you 100% that it will not go to infinity. Yes? What if, what if your number, like you had 